Right, here we go. Welcome to No Fixed Course. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be making a stone plinth for this little Nurgle tank thing. I can't remember what it's called. Um, my son got me this as a Father's Day present a couple of years ago. So I need to finish it. And I thought it's not a gaming piece, so we'll do it a nice plinth. Um, and we'll try and do it in the easiest way possible. So we've got an old mobile phone box um, that's about the right size, square plinth, but we're gonna need to split that in half. So we'll just put a divider in, just made from cardboard, which is the ultimate building tool. As we progress through various bits and pieces on this channel, you will find out that it is the ultimate building tool. We've snipped this to roughly the right size. Um, we'll seal it in place with some. Uh, I'm using no more nails here. Um, that's just because I've got a tube of it knocking around. Um, PVA glue will do. You just have to leave it a little bit longer to dry. Um, and you can just. All you need to do is just seal any potential gaps where the. Uh, we'll be using plaster of Paris. Um, not too thick. So we just need to make sure there's no places where it can leak. Make sure you seal seal any gaps and things like I'm doing here. Um, we'll just clamp it in place. These aren't particularly strong clamps, but perfect for uh, working with cardboard and anything that could easily be damaged. So once that's set, um, if there's any lines or gaps that won't stick down, just pop some tape over them. Uh, this is masking tape and then we'll mix up some plaster of paris uh, i've put some um a mod podge in there with it which is uh it's like a sort of pva slash wood glue kind of stuff it's very very good now i've heard that this will stop plaster of paris shrinking and making it a, a little bit more durable and from the results here it seems to have worked it hasn't been shrunk at all uh, the finish is very slightly different so it doesn't sort of crumble in your hand too much it's quite strong apparently the same thing works with clay as well uh, so one of the next builds will be doing a standard sort of clay display and we're going to try mixing it with some PVA glue but for this bit you're trying to replicate stone, so we'll just beat the absolute snot out of it and chip the edges. And what you want here is you, you want to be as random as possible. The humans are really, really good at spotting patterns. So just be very, very random with it. Um, you still need to seal it, so a bit of PVA glue and whatever your base paint is, plus a bunch of water to thin it down and let it soak into the uh, plaster of Paris. Give it a good coat of that. Once that's dry, we'll um, just pick out some of the edges with some slightly lighter greys. Uh, stone always works best when you, you work in uh, varying layers. So a bit of dry brushing, airbrushing, and then a bit more dry brushing just to, just to build up the layers. Sort of build it up uh, in a quite a natural way. Now I've stuck mainly with uh, greys and blacks and things here, but uh, 
you can add plenty of browns and blues and all sorts of different uh, different colors so just going over through the airbrush um the very random pattern again leave some of that um pva gray mix showing through just keep working up in tones um, I'm using Games Workshop colours, but you can use anything. And we just did want to do some washes over all the cracks and chips and dents and things because when you're using an airbrush it doesn't it doesn't allow the the inks and washes to pool uh, it just tints everything so you want to put these on with the brush just wipe off any excess with your thumb or a cloth or, or whatever you've got to hand just so you don't get any harsh uh, tide marks and lines but if you do we can we can cover those up afterwards some more speckling in patterns with the uh, with the black wash and games workshop black washes airbrush really really well as do their contrast paints Same again with, uh, I believe this is Basilican uh, Grey, which is a uh, very dark, dark grey in the contrast paint range. Again, just be random, do lines, dots, all sorts of, any kind of shapes you want. At this stage, if you want to add some of the browns and, and greens, blues, things like that to make it look like older stone, uh, that's probably the point to do it. And then finally, we'll just dry brush over with some, uh, it's an off-white, sort of very pale grey. Uh, and that'll bring it all together. That picks out the edges. And uh, if you've got a soft enough brush, you can sort of tone down any of the uh, airbrush parts that you've done previously if something's just a little bit too dark. So there we go. That is the finished piece. Uh, just a lump of stone. Uh, this is going on display. So what we'll do next is we'll just pop some uh, little feet on it, which is uh, the soft fuzzy parts from a, a patch of Velcro. And then uh, in a future video, we'll get the Nurgle Plague Crawler. See, I finally remember what, what it was called. We'll get the Plague Crawler finished and get him drilled and pinned to the base. we go sorted so that can be placed anywhere you want now um, and the base itself the plinth is all done which I thought was a bit different and looks quite nice so thank you very much for watching uh, please like subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified when I release more videos and um, we'll see you next time thank you bye bye